Hey guys, how's it going? It's E. Daniels here. Welcome to episode number 10 of this NHL 22 Minnesota Wild franchise mode here on my channel. If you guys have missed any episodes up to this point, head up into that top corner of the video right now. I know it kills watch time, but I want you to be caught up on every episode leading up to this point. So last episode, we were knocked out in round one by the Washington Capitals. And in turn, yes, we did go and acquire a big name draft pick in Jagger Polino. I'm sure some of you guys don't like that, but honestly, I don't really care. So we are getting into the offseason and the re-signing phase. Obviously, you can see up in the top corner of the video, 2-4 to four loss there. And of course, Iowa made it all the way to the finals and lost to Melville in six. So a bit heartbreaking there. But it happens, and, well, today I want to get to the progress reports, absolutely, because, well, we do have certain players that have made some decent progress. First off, Matthew Boldy's now a medium elite. That is something we absolutely wanted to see, and he has hit it, so that is really good to know. Um, he has also developed, when he made that natural growth up, I haven't touched his X factor. So, he did originally, oh wait, sorry, no, no, never mind, this is just the glitch with, uh, what do you call it? Um, what's his name? This is actually supposed to be Kaprizov's X Factors. That's actually Boldy. Sorry, my bad. I thought uh, I thought he made some actual progress and jumps, but no, he didn't. Anyways, Michkov uh, plus 22 growth. Lambos and Sexton 18. Uh, Trey Weller plus 16. Really good to see there. There's some really good numbers throughout the team here, and. Uh, yeah, I think we're we're actually in a really good spot right now. So, Mayorov also made some decent progress. Same with Sundin, Felipe Howard, and that was kind of about it. Everybody else was, yeah, <laughs> they weren't fantastic, but they weren't terrible either. So, um, I believe we just drafted Geisberg too. But anyways, um, Bergfors didn't make as much of a jump as I wanted him to. And same with Oscar Silverberg. That's not great now that he's 19. Yeah, we've got some players that are they're interesting players, and they're not necessarily going to be really, really good players, apart from, of course, Jack Foligno. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Obviously, we've got some goalies, too. Like, Wallstead, again, didn't make the jump we are waiting for. And um, that's going to have to happen here in this upcoming season. So we're going to get to the offseason, I think, that our biggest move as far as pending free agents goes is, I, I don't know. I actually don't know what our biggest move is going to be. Of course, a player like, yeah, sure, Rasmus Dahlin or somebody like that would be sick, but it's also quite unlikely that we actually end up landing any young players because we don't have any draft picks. So um, I'm just trying to think, think up deals that might turn out. Our best option could very well be a goalie potentially like Sorokin, Flurry, or like, <sighs> there's one other guy, I'm thinking Gustafson maybe, because 39 wins last season is really, really good, so anyways, that's what I'm thinking, I'm thinking we will probably go out and get a goalie, because, you know, Kakinen was okay, but for the full season, him and Talbot aren't gonna be the greatest tandem, so... Let's get to the re-sign phase here. Um, we've got a ton of scouts that I got to re-sign first, so that's kind of boring, but I will get it done here quickly. Fortunately, the Series X is extremely fast. Oh, it's actually so nice. Like, I don't have to sit here and wait forever and ever just to sign some scouts. Oh, it's beautiful. That's so nice. I love that. Okay. Uh, coaches seem to actually be pretty good right now. We're going to hold on to this current coach for now. Um, I'm sure we will start to make some more changes as we get into it. But, you know, Brandon Frank's been pretty good since we hired him. Obviously, you know, the team hasn't quite performed up to the top end standards, but that happens. So um, without further ado, we've got some players hitting restricted free agency, obviously, as well as JT Miller is becoming a UFA. So we definitely have some names to sign here. First off, Matthew Boldy wants $9.8 It's a bit expensive. We do have how much money? We've got 20, yeah, 26.8 million available. So that's actually really good. Um, and of course, you know, for seven, eight, nine years, we would love to sign uh, Boldy. But at the same time, it's also going to be 
a little bit difficult at that price point. If we go up to a seven or eight year deal, he's looking at 10 million bucks. Okay, so if we go 0.85 times 10.75, we're looking at a $9.15 million contract about for Boldy for eight years. I think that's absolutely doable with his caliber of player that that he's played at up to this point. So I think we absolutely offer Boldy that price point. 9.1 isn't crazy expensive. JT Miller is actually looking like a really decent deal right now. 6.825 million at 85%. We're looking at, okay, 5.8 is a little low. He's at least a $6 million player. So we're going to offer him 6 mil for the next two years. I'm really hoping he takes that um, because, you know, then we could potentially use him as a trade asset or something along those lines. Eric Stahl... 1.3 million, sure, one year. Of course, that's worth the deal. Um, Pontus Avery actually wants to play for our team. I find that interesting, but he could actually be a pretty decent piece as long as he doesn't want a lot of money. Um, we're going to offer him 1.8 mil for the next season, give him one of those, like, prove-it-to-me contracts. Um, Connor Duar, we're going to keep around. Again, these are just players that I'm more so interested in keeping around because they've been with our organization for a while. More so than, you know, a guy like Antoine Morand. I don't feel super inclined to re-sign, especially since we have other guys coming up through the system. Same with Clegg. Even same with, like, Pullman. Pullman's kind of not been great, to be completely honest. Um, Adam Beckham, I was really hoping would be better by now, and he's not. Um, per or Par Erickson, though, who we just drafted. Again, absolutely going to get a contract. Look at his X-Factors. He's got so many. So I'm really hoping that helps him develop quickly as a defenseman because, honestly, we haven't had too, too many defensemen really develop well. Like, I think by now in the Quebec series anyways, we had Caleb Ortmeier develop as, like, a fifth rounder, which is fantastic. But um, Morgan Moy going to need a contract here. Who else? Ribeiro's a walk. Bergfors, Sundin, those guys I don't feel so inclined to sign. Mayorov, I think we will just because he's a low top six, so there is potential there still. But yeah, overall, not a ton of re-signing that's needed to be done. Um, Kakinen doesn't want to play for us. How much money is he requesting? Okay, he's also only 1.9 million, though. So... We just keep Cam Talbot around on the cheap, cheap deal. That might be the idea, actually. Um, and then a guy like Nicholas Lawrence could come in and potentially back up Wallstead. I mean, how good? Barabao played really good last year. But so did Wallstead. But Barabao got more starts, so I think we're going to walk him, to be completely honest. I would rather sign Nicholas Lawrence and have Wallstead getting one more good year of seasoning in the AHL before he really hits the NHL. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for contracts here, to be honest. This is a lot smoother than I thought it was going to be. Let's advance a couple days, see what's going on with the team here. And looks like, okay, we definitely get Adam Beckham, Alexander Kovanov. You can kind of see the names up there, like from the morale. But we also got some new players in too, so... Of course, Adam Beckham signs. Um, okay, so JT Miller wants more than six mil. That's fair. Nicholas Lawrence signs. Aberg signs. Same with Connor Dewar. Same with Damien Giroux. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so Matthew Boldy wants longer contract. Or he said, if you're going to adjust it to a longer contract, I want more money. Fair enough. Um, Eric Stahl wasn't happy with the minutes he played, but of course we get Jagger Felino, we get Morgan Moy. We can't sign Mayorov due to full roster, but we do get Par Erickson. Okay, so we're going to have to release some players that I'm not so interested in keeping. Um, and again, Matthew Boldy. I want to offer him the $10 million deal, but I think, well, 9.85. We could probably get him for even cheaper for the six years, so... 9.85, 8.3. If we can get him for like 8.5, I would definitely sign Matthew Bully for 8.5 million. JT Miller, if 
for two years, I'm going to offer him a $6.25 million deal, and hopefully he takes that. Um, after that, let's see, Eric Stahl wasn't happy with the minutes he played, so we can offer him like $1.8 million. That should get him to change his mind. Because again, I would assume he probably does want to stay in Minnesota. But we are going to release Morand and Clegg. Again, they were just free agency pickups that didn't actually turn out to be all that great. Uh, Shafi, though, I'm going to sign. Um, Riedel wasn't bad either, so we'll sign him up again for a year. Uh, Nazan was terrible. We're getting rid of him. Lazat wasn't great again but you know one year whatever we can sign him for that um i'm not really feeling darius ribeiro either but he actually put up a lot of points considering he's a defensive defenseman in the usahl or us hockey league like that's that's just a strange one to be honest but we will sign Ruslan mayorov Maybe we do sign Ribeiro for a year, and if we have to buy him out, oh well, we'll release him, right? It's not the biggest deal. Um, so yeah, I think we honestly are. I don't want to, but I think we honestly might have to let Kakinen or Barabao walk. Because as much as I want to keep Kakinen around, even if I offer him like $2.25 million, I don't want to pay too much more than that for a goalie, so... All right, let's see. Kakinen, okay, he did want to sign, apparently. So we do get Kakinen back. We get Ruedel. Um, Miller's going to need more money. Same with Lazad, I think. Okay. Jeez, okay. So we get Eric Stahl, at least. We get Mayorov. These big guns are really, really pushing me here. Okay, I'll offer you 9 mil for the next six years. You're not better than Kaprizov. You're not getting more than that. Um, and Miller's not getting more than six and a half million for the next two seasons. So, take it. JT Miller resigns. Beautiful. Boldy. Goodness me, man. You are, you're good. You're a good player. Don't get me wrong there. But, I'm offering you 9.25. If you don't take it, I don't know if I can offer you more than that. God, he's, he's going to be this way, hey? 9.5 million, Boldy. Take it or leave it. And he does take it. Okay, beautiful. All right, so we got two roster spots left, which is probably about perfect. Um, we are going to be looking into a few different spots, starting off mainly with not the centers. The centers are actually quite strong right now. Um, I'm, I'm happy with where our center group is at um left wing is stacked beyond belief because again these guys play right wing left wing and center um there's a lot of them like that so yeah left wing looks ridiculously strong the right wing looks the exact opposite for the same exact reason as far as some guys play a lot other guys don't play many positions at all um defense actually looks quite good um Sexton, Lambos, yeah, we got a nice young defensive core overall. I mean, Chernak and Hall are going to be there to kind of hold down the fort with some of these youngsters. Um, and I wouldn't mind getting, you know, one or two more decent um, defensive prospects over the next season or two. I don't know how we're going to acquire them necessarily, but that's okay. So let's simulate two free agency. And, well, of course, we got to get the trade block in progress. I mean, Miller, we might end up trading, but I don't know. Felino's a no. Same with, same with most of these guys, honestly. I don't really want to trade him. So Felino is absolute maximum value. That's kind of funny, actually, considering we did not pay that for him. Um, Greenway's up there. Duffy's surprisingly high value. But if he does develop which very well might be the case. Um, we'll, we'll keep an eye on him. Obviously, he's playing where? Liga? Yeah, okay, so he'll get better. But um, Leighton in the same thing. Bird for yeah, th there's lots of guys on here that are going to be decent players, but um, we really, really just need, I think, a goalie and maybe one more defenseman. So let's get to that. Um, obviously, free agency is available. We got $9 bucks in cap space 
I don't know if six million or six and a half million for Latang would be a good idea necessarily. Um, but again, a lot of these guys might not necessarily be a good idea, so. Eh, Edmondson's questionable. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know, Pesci might be good too, but again, I don't know if we really need another defensive defenseman. Sean Walker, on the other hand, might be a bit better. Not about goalies. Okay, Sorokin made it. Same with Flurry. Uh, Flurry played for Chicago, so I don't know if I'm really feeling that. Sorokin wants way too much money for how good he's actually been, um, which I think is going to be an issue. But we do have a lot of Russian players on this team too. Other players, did he make it? I don't think he did. Dang it, I was really looking forward to potentially getting Philip Gustafson, but that doesn't seem to be the case. On the other hand, though, Connor Hellebuck is available and only wants one year. So that's interesting. Um, He was up there on wins, wasn't he? Yeah, he had 30. Okay, nothing crazy. He wasn't 35 like Samson Auburn. 44 like Flurry. Um, but that's the thing is, do we want a goalie that just had 44 wins and is coming off a really hot season? Or do we want a goalie that didn't necessarily have a hot season, but could be good, right? Like, that's the question. Like, I think a guy like Tristan Jari could actually be a really decent sign-in. But at the same time, I don't know if he is exactly what this team wants. I think he is kind of what I want in a goaltender. But at the same time, we've had very questionable, mixed opinion kind of decisions with goalies up to this point. So... Sign him five million for two just to get him, um, and then I do want a younger defenseman, preferably if we can find one. But that's questionable. Brandon Gooley, okay, not bad. You, you're not gonna sign Graham Sword, okay? Well, you know what? If you're not gonna sign Graham Sword, I'm gonna sign Graham Sword, okay? Um, what was that? That was actually just such an absolute biff by. Um, Arizona, like, what are you doing? You just forget to sign a player that's actually a really decent player? Like, what? I I don't understand that. Anyways, um, I believe some of these guys are RFAs. Others are UFAs, um, such as, hey, Henry Yokiharu. That could be a deal. Yes, it could. Welcome to the team, Henry. You want to come play for us? Come play for us. Um... Ian Mitchell was also really, really good against us in the playoffs, so maybe that's a guy we pursue. Um, and apart from that, you know, I don't feel super inclined to a guy like Carrier or Carrier, or however you say his name. I don't know. There's a lot of guys that I'm just kind of like, meh, they could be better, but they could also be a lot worse. Um, nobody with X factors, so <laughs> it's kind of expected, to be honest. Um, no, Chris Letang, but we don't have the money for that now. We just spent like five million bucks on Jari, so I think we've got everybody I want to sign. I don't think is Colin Miller. Is he JT Miller's brother? I don't actually know if he is, but um, anyways, let's advance a day or two here. Islanders want Stall. That's interesting. I don't want to give up Eric Stall, but are we gonna get Tristan Jari and Graham Sword and those guys? Okay, we get Henry Yogiharu, we get Tristan Jari, and we get Graham Sword. Perfect. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. So, I think that is actually as far as we have capacity to sign. Yep, 50 out of 50. No exempt contracts. We get Graham Sword back, which is actually hilarious. I didn't think that was going to happen. And the fact that he is actually here and playing in the system, coming off of a 76-point season... Yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with where the team's at. So <laughs> let's uh let's get to the next season. Um I think we're ready to go here. And I think it's just gonna be lineup management for the rest of the episode as I've kind of talked through all of this. I wanna see how the team shapes up, if I can get some good lines set up and things like that. And I'm sure we'll get some more trade offers here. So we could get two third rounders in the upcoming draft for Pontus Aberg. That might not be a bad idea, honestly. 
Um, let's see if Carolina comes back with that deal. Second rounder for Felino. Don't want to do that. I don't want to give up Justin Hall either. Nope. Okay, let's see. Do we get that two thirds? Who's two of mine? In? Eh, I don't think so. I would love to see that double third rounder again for Aberg if it's available. Seattle. Yeah, Seattle hasn't been that great. So, you know what? I think we are going to do that one. Um, the left wing's already strong. We've already got decent depth on this team. So, we're going to do this one. Um, Aberg and a fifth next year in exchange for... Well, first off, this is with Seattle. I don't actually know what the date is on this trade, but we're trading Pontus Aberg, who we literally just acquired. 2026 fifth in exchange for... Oh, wait. I typed that in wrong. Okay. In exchange for... Um, let's see. Columbus's 2025 third and Seattle's 2025 third. All right. Um, so yeah, I think that is a decent deal. We will take it and continue simulating here. Of course, now we get a Jeremy Swayman offer. That's actually kind of funny. So, um, personally, I think this team is going to be hot next year, especially with the amount of high-skilled forwards and defensemen that we have. I think that's going to make a big difference. Um, we'll see if we get decent development in the team, but uh, let's check out the lines. So before I actually get to the lines, we obviously have to go and make some roster moves because there are some big name players that I would like up in our team. Um, first off being, of course, Jake Neighbors. He should be a little higher up. Um, and then we have Jesper Wallstead in here too, who are both guys that need to be getting some more NHL playtime as first round picks. And well, I think in turn we're going to send... Ooh, who's getting the bump? Um, unfortunately, it might be Yoki Haru here. So we're going to do that, um, and then we will make some... I will show you guys the lines. I am actually going to change one more thing. We're going to send Justin Hall down, and I'm going to keep Yoki Haru up. I think that's just the better move. Sure, it's $3.2 million for Hall, but I believe he's also only got like one year of remaining, so... I would rather keep Yogi Haru up just to help with chemistry reasons and stuff like that. All right, guys, so this is the lineup that we are going to be running for this upcoming season. I'm honestly thinking about doing a coaching change after this year. Um, just to, well, of course, it's going to be Jagger Felino's first year on the team, so he will grow hopefully significantly and make an impact. But I am a little worried about the zeros on these bottom two lines with the chemistry just because we have been struggling a little bit when it comes to things like that. Um, apart from that, I don't understand why, but Magnus Oduya just isn't getting chemistry with our defensive defenseman either, which is a little bit concerning, but it is what it is, and I do like how our defense is set up for the most part based on the fact that Lambos doesn't really fit the system the way the other guys do as far as, you know, a hold line cycle. Because that's what just about everybody else on this team is playing. You look at it, hold line cycle, hold line, turn axe a balance shoot, sure, but like you go into the system with two more new guys that we have with Graham Sword and Par Erickson, those guys as well are going to be <laughs> hold line and cycle defensemen. So we're gonna be able to run almost a full hold line and cycle set up with this team but overall you know the team is still pretty good like there's there's lots of opportunity to do well with this team more so than we've had in previous years we're gonna play justin hall there i think yeah that's better 
we could even start Eric Center Sword further down, but I want them getting lots of playtime. And of course, I don't think I showed you guys, Jesper Wellstead's up to an 82. He's finally hit that, you know, kind of like, okay, I'm ready to play kind of level at the NHL. I'm going to go change a couple numbers, um, especially Wallstead's because he's number four as a goalie, so that doesn't make sense. But, um, interesting here. Um, we did just trade Erickson Eck. So, in my opinion, we should probably be playing... I don't know if I want to give it to Greenway. I think I want to give it to Trey Weller um, for the alternate, just because Weller looks so good um, as a defenseman. And I think we're going to give Wolstead number 30. And there are some retired numbers on this team, as you can see. One for the fans. I'm not going to give 9 out to anybody because... Well, that's Miku Koivu's number, and if you guys missed it, Miku Koivu's number did recently get retired. So, um, that's the team. That's where we're at with everything. I don't think too many other changes are necessary here, and I'm actually really happy with where the team is at. So, apart from that, well, let's uh, let's take a look at the draft class here before we get into it. Um, the defenseman. Never do. That's that's probably a franchise defenseman. If I'm being completely honest, he's in rest of the world. What the hell? Okay. Well, we will probably assign a scout to that because that's ridiculous. But um, interesting draft class coming up here. I don't know what to make of it yet. Obviously, we don't have any real scouting reports. Goalie at 44 is pretty high. Um, that's not a first-round goalie by any means, but that's kind of what we're looking at here with this team. Um, there's not really a whole lot else to really be said here right now. Um, I think I'm going to jump in do some scouting. Maybe we'll highlight a preseason game or two or something like that because I don't really want to get into the next season in this episode, but at the same time... The team is pretty much set up and ready to go, apart from, you know, getting some better, like getting a better coach eventually, which is possible, but at the same time is going to be difficult. So, yeah, the, the hold line cycle thing is just going to be a pain in the butt. So, all right, guys, so simulating ahead now, I've done all my uh, my scouting and everything. We're jumping in on a, on a Colorado game here, and we're just blowing out the avalanche, so... I mean, we are playing with a full roster too, which I really tend not to care about because, again, it's not like we have Fog of War on because Fog of War is just annoying at this point. So, um, Chicago is a little bit more interesting. Maybe not as the Felino start scoring, but that's okay. So, um, wow, okay, Jagger Felino's having himself a nice little, nice little preseason up to this point. Um, we're just doing kind of a quick sim here of the preseason, unless, you know, for some reason we're losing a game, which so far has not been the case. Um, yeah, okay. Playing all the central teams, and things seem to be... Wow, Jagger Felino, I love it. I love it, he's going to be sweet. So, um, Jordan Greenway, okay, looking good. All right, on to the next game in the wild, our 4 0 and O in preseason so far so i assume there's going to be one game that's close and it's probably oh no it's not going to be arizona never mind we uh we walk all over everybody here i like how this has started um and i especially like how jagger felino is putting up points right now because that's really what you want to see oh okay okay we got a game we got a game i, I like it dallas has actually shown up a little bit so let's see if we can uh, have some fun with the stars here and not get too too crazy out of all honesty i kind of think that this is going to be our season just based on how the team has performed up to this point holy good play yeah felino seems like a unit too bad. Missed the pass. Um, I've put Trey Weller with Sexton because they get the plus five chemistry. But at the same time, it's also a very interesting setup as far as two defensive defensemen go. We could save Tristan Jari. Alright, here comes Matthew Boldy. 
He comes walking in, looking for a play. Back to Weller. That's a cannon. Flurry signed with Dallas. Okay, okay, interesting. Um, who's that? Kusnadinov, yeah. We've actually been more effective at passing than that's that's interesting. I don't know if I entirely believe that. Anyways, faceoff goes back. Sexton looking for a play. Can't find any space. Miller back to Sexton over to Weller. He shoots through traffic. That was a good chance. Miller right out in front tried it. Ooh, I tried to poke that through Flurry's legs. I was kind of hoping he'd go across and that would just go in, but not quite. I do think that this Minnesota team is is going to be really good for years to come. Well, they're looking for pa um, what the fuck was that? Can we take the puck, please? just some really glitchy gameplay going on here. Oh, Heiskanen just got absolutely ran over. <laughs> Trey Weller looking for a play. Cuts back, walks into the slot. Oh, that was a good chance. Wow, Dallas made quite a few free agent signings. Here you go, Miller, right in front. Kuznadinov can't find it. Greenway walks in, good shot, rebound was there. We are playing full press, yeah? There's another good poke check. Magnus Oduya looking for a play. Using his elite edges, but it just didn't quite work out there. Here comes Oduya, cuts back, looking for a play. Tried to go up top. Couldn't find it. Kustadinov right out in front. Come on, man. That's got to be a goal. They're going to break out now. Okay. Don't know what's going on here. Some really random, like, puck losses and stuff like that. There you go. Kustadinov. I like it. I like it. Kustadinov right out in front. Can't jam it. Tyler Mott now. Lambos is going to pick it up. Makes the cut. Carson Lambos. Looking around, he's going to cut back, send it over to Kaprizov, over to Oduya. Back to Lambos. Lambos to Oduya, that was a cannon. Wow, okay, that was actually a really good chance. Kaprizov, good battle. Over to Lambos, he's going to shoot through traffic. Man, we are firing some pucks here. Can we get a play going here? Mano, that one's picked off. Here comes Kaprizov. Kirill just cuts right through the defense. Oh, good try. Pass back to Felino. Good try. We're down to six minutes. I mean, hey, we're running three lines. I like how everything's kind of cycled up to this point. But um, yeah, it's also been uh, been a slightly low-scoring game for our team, honestly. Mason Shaw wins the face-off. Can, can we fuck off? I don't want all these goddamn notifications while I'm recording. Jeez. <laughs> Just like... Calendar alert, calendar alert, calendar alert. Like, jeez. <laughs> Sunquist, nice pass. Okay, that's how we're gonna be. Sexton gets stick lift over to Weller. He can't get the shot through. Tyler Mott just got his career ended on that play, potentially. A very big hit from Trey Weller. Yeah, okay, Dumoulin. Yeah, you're such a good defenseman. Who's in net right now, Jerry? Yeah, it is Jerry. All right, here comes Boldy. Cuts back, walks in. Can't score though, I don't know why. We're running out of time here though, We're down to two minutes.
Alright, get the goalie pulled. That's a good play. Trey Weller tees one up. God, he just missed that. Where are you going, Kalen Addison? Oh my god, they did not just hit the post on that. Great pressure, guys. Yeah, great pressure. Here comes Miller with 27 seconds left. Not exactly what we wanted, but that's okay. Oh, Addison. Oh my goodness, great chances there. Matt Van Leechkov walks out in front, rebound. Oh man, boys, tuck a shot away. I don't see why that's so difficult. I mean, Flurry's good, maybe we should have gotten him, but it's a 2-1 game. He's not gonna stop every single shot, and he has. So, Kuznadinov, you gotta win that, buddy. And I missed it here. Oh man, so we do lose that one, but oh well, it happens. Goodness me, Ellie Mae. So yeah, I mean, it's a loss, whatever, it happens. I was kind of hoping we'd go undefeated in preseason. I think we're, what, yeah, 5-1-0, so... Really, it's been a pretty decent preseason, and St. Louis has had a really good one, too. So, first period against St. Louis, wow, okay, that's, uh, that's brutal. I mean, that made Michkov scoring like crazy, but the rest of the team, not so much there. So that's, we'll jump in and play one more, and then wrap it up from there. But, man, that's kind of bad. <coughs> Alright, so here we go. Another game... Another chance to potentially get a win here, but it would be nice to go almost undefeated in preseason. If that's the case, that would be awesome. So, anyways, we got some good players on this team. I got no doubt in my mind about that. Man, what is going on? It's two pucks that just bounced right out of play. <laughs> Off of a dump in and a dump in. Like, yeah, okay, great. <laughs> Alright, Felino loses that one. Vucinevich separated from the puck. Okay, Pareko. Didn't realize you were so adept at interceptions. Here comes Felino cutting in. That's, yeah, that's, um,. That's what a number one pick does. That's gorgeous. What a goal. Jagger full, you know. Wow. Just scored an absolutely gorgeous finish there. Go on. Go on. Go see mommy. All right. So 5-4 game now. We're a little bit closer. And uh, let's see if we can get back in this. Good poke check there. What was that pass? Alright, face off here now, gonna go back, oh god. This is a good pass to Kaprizov, Kaprizov looking for space, walks in and shoots, big freaking rebound, nobody there. Now Boldy, walks across, puts it bar down, nice finish, okay. 5-5 five, five game, only takes 5 minutes, but uh... Yeah, Matt Boldy, fifth goal of the preseason, makes it look really easy. So, I think this team's got some serious chemistry going already. I'm really happy with how that went. Oh, he put it off the post. It wasn't quite bar down, but it was close. So, 5-0 game. 
looking real good and uh, we got a chance now oh what is that play all right Miller gonna walk in shoot into his guy Face off in neutral ice. Gonna go back to Marco Rossi. Sexton gonna hit Rossi full stride here. Marco Rossi looking for a play. Cuts back. Can't win the battle. Beachkov does though. That's interference. Alright, now JT Miller walks in. That's a good shot. Marco Rossi, nice edges. Oh, I thought we were talking another shorty there. Back to Sexton, he's gonna absolutely murder a guy there. Costin really felt that one, you could tell. Can... Alright, here comes Michkov, not by Michkov. Sharp angle, gonna put it right off the mask. Good try. Sometimes those ones actually go in, it's unlikely, but sometimes they do, so. Alright, leading the attack now, and uh, we will hopefully get another one here soon. Lambo shoots that thing like another 10 feet wide of the net. Now off to Logan Brown. He finds Tarasenko, who just comes glancing in. Ooh, good check there by Oduya. Magnus Oduya, oh, good try. Carson Lambos fires another one there, good chance. Greenway throwing some cross checks on the ice in, you like it. <laughs> it's just preseason, but why not get a little gritty? Face off here, gonna actually go back to Kusnadinov. I was like, oh yeah, more or uh, Ryan O'Reilly's gonna win that for sure, but I guess not. So, Jordan Greenway using some power moves. Like to see it. <laughs> Him and Vince Dunn are kind of going at it, but who cares? Alright, face off here now, and Riley's obviously going to beat Shaw there. Buchnevich gets bumped off the puck again. That's actually almost a good pass, but not quite. Must have iced the puck half a dozen times this game already. <laughs> So it would be nice to get a face-off win here, and we do. That's beautiful. All right. Now Ryan O'Reilly walks in. Gets one of the luckiest bounces I've ever seen off of getting completely and utterly checked right in front of your own net. What? That actually just went in. That's that's pretty sad on I think that was Wallstead. In net. I think that was on Wallstead, so. Oh well. Happens sometimes. Bit of a lame duck goal, but that's okay. Can we make a pass? That's goal interference right there. Nothing called on it. Pass out in front. Oh my god, Felino just scored. Wait, Felino didn't even score it. He just kind of redirected it. And Kaprizov tucks one away to tie this one up 6 6 immediately and silence the St. Louis crowd. <laughs> that should not have been a goal either, but hey, lucky bounces count, right? So, Kaprizov from Boldy. He'll love to see it. And, uh, 
Our first line's definitely playing here. Felino gets hit from behind on that play. Now Weller right out in front. Can't find anybody, unfortunately. And it just gets absolutely dumped there. Oh, we did draw a power play. I was like, is that not interference? Jonathan Dowling takes a stupid penalty with not much time left. That's what we like to see. And, uh, well, final three minutes of the game. That's about where you want to draw a penalty. So, face-off going to go back. Oduya through traffic. Brussois sees that the whole way. <laughs> Alright, so we got Kusinadinov on the face-off with Felino and I believe that's Boldy. Felino tries to go short side, probably should have gone far, but that's okay. Keep taking face-offs, hey, it doesn't really hurt. Kusinadinov wins that one. Okay, lucky bounce, that's okay. Oh my god, that all went through traffic. That was a really good chance. I can't believe that didn't actually go. What is that pass? You shouldn't be able to pass it that far. Like, we, I guess I don't have any auto assist on, so that would be why the passing is so atrocious. Matthew Boldy looking for a play. Gets around two guys. Rebounds right there. Good play from Kusnadinov, but it didn't make a difference. Dude, how do you miss that pass by so far? I actually don't get it. <laughs> Such a bad pass. It's like just down the wing instead of right up the middle to where our guy is. <laughs> oh well. Fortunately, we got most of our players changed there, so. All right, Rossi wins the draw. Here comes Michka looking for space. He cuts back, gonna find Kaprizov over to Addison. Didn't quite go through. And Zaitsev's gonna get the clear. All right, um, up to Rossi, over to Greenway. Greenway gets past his guy. Looking for a play, can't find it. Another just terrible error. Oh, that's cool. Good old misplay. All right. Rossi. Oh, Marco Rossi's got space here. Oh, dangles. Oh, Marco Rossi. What a goal. That's that's exactly what he does. Playmaking forward. He will just full on. He's got, uh, what do you call it? He's got an ankle breaker, so he'll just come on and just full on, like, DQ out of your pants mid-rush and still go in and score at full speed, so... Marco Rossi makes it look easy, and we are up 7-6 now. This game is such a high-scoring game, it's insane. So, minute 20 left. Let's see if we can hold on. Buchnevich gets laid out. Michkov almost takes that one away. Good battles. I like it. Michkov almost got through there. Who is that guy? Punenovs. Oh no. Oh no. Riley in by himself misses it. How did Ryan O'Reilly not score there? I just got a penalty? Oh, I guess I did. Yeah, Trey Weller on the poke check there. Took out uh, Punenovs skates. <laughs> Oops. So yeah, um... I didn't even see that guy play like all game. It's got to be one of their rookies or somebody, but there's still time here. Oh my god, Tristan Jerry. Nice pass. Right down towards the empty net. <laughs> Solid 15 seconds left. That did not connect. Oh no, oh no, Klim cost. <laughs> Man, there was what, 9 seconds left? Yeah. 
go figure. That would be very Minnesota-esque to choke the game with that much time left. And um, that kind of sucks. That was really bad play for my, my part. So um, I guess we're going to overtime here unless they somehow score really quick. So yeah, we will be headed to OT here nice and quick, and then um, that'll decide it, I guess. So, such a strange game, such high scoring, 7-7, seven, seven, like seriously. Dumba, good try. Oh, two on one, here we go. Great pass across, oh, I thought that was gonna convert for sure. Now Trey Weller looking for space, cuts out and across, Trey Weller, oh man, had the chance. There we go, two on one, Trey Weller, oh man, good try. Why is Rossi back again defending by himself? <laughs> Now Luke Shen coming down the wing, puts it off the post. Good try. A good chance for Pareko right in front there, but we're off to the races as the turnover happens, and Kaprizov cannot finish it. Good try. We're still going here. Now Matthew Boldy. You can't do that, Pareko. You wanna you wanna throw that hit. You can't take a full on blatant charge. You can't dodge every punch. Oh my goodness, Pareko. Who do you think you are? This is Eric Chernak you're fighting, right? What? It's Eric Chernak. He's huge. <laughs> it was a really dirty hit, to be completely honest. You can't take five strides into it, so... Pareko's getting a penalty, right? You should be on the man advantage. Nope. Nope. Why would that be the case? <laughs> Okay, minute and a half left. Polino gonna lose it. That's great. Alright, on the dump and chase. What is that play? Oh, nice one, Tori Krug. That is not the guy you want to give the puck away to. Fortunately, he didn't make you pay, but... Oh, nice pass. Beautiful passing. Alright, Felino tries to jam it. Oh, good chances there. Oh yeah, that's it. How is that not the game? Oh my goodness, Felino creating havoc with his hitting there. But Oh man. There you go. <laughs> Man, Meechkov deked the goalie out of his pants on that one, but we knew that was coming, so. <sighs> yeah, Avey Meechkov ends the game. Ends a very good, um, what do you call it, very good preseason, and uh, that's exactly what we wanted to see. So, team's looking good up to this point, and uh, that is where we're going to wrap this episode up as we outshoot them by 14 shots. That's a lot, so. 10 points from each cub in preseason, and um, I think that's right about where we wanted to be heading into this season. Um, I'm kind of interested to see. There's a franchise defenseman here. Oh my goodness, okay. He, uh, his defense doesn't actually look... Wait, what? How does he have no weaknesses? He's got a C rating for a grade. What? Um, okay, that's interesting. Kind of wondering about the rest of these guys, though. Because Kaloum looks like an absolute generational goal scorer, too. But, um, anyways, that is where we're going to wrap this one up. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and hit the notification bell to never miss these uploads. And, of course, make sure to drop comments in the comment box. And also, um, feel free to, you know hit the notification bell and 
do all that good stuff. But that's going to be it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time.